Crazy stuff. A stunning undercover videotape showing a far left activist apparently admitting to disrupting Trump rallies. We are contracting directly with the DNC and We'll have the full story tonight. Philadelphia's one that's mentioned. I think Romney got no votes and McCain got no votes. He had like no votes. I invite Mr. Trump to stop whining. Donald Trump believes the vote might be rigged. We have been investigating that charge. Is it legal? We'll present the facts. Also, I had Brandon Fox poll an electoral college map showing the state of the presidential race 24 hours before the big debate. Caution. You are about to enter the no spin zone. Back to begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. What is wrong with America? That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. This evening, we will set up the final presidential debate in Las Vegas tomorrow night. Just a few moments, we'll show you why Donald Trump has to win decisively in Vegas or he will lose the general election. Mr. Trump should absolutely capitalize on what is wrong in America because there's no doubt we're in trouble. First, the economy. Growth is less than 2%. That means well-paying jobs are scarce and workers have to take what's available. The unemployment rate doesn't mean very much when new jobs come with low salaries. With all the resources we have in the USA, growth should be far more than 2%. On the immigration front, after all these years, people can still walk across the southern border, establish residency illegally in this country, and then have the government actually pay them entitlements. Does that sound like a fair system to you? When case law was destroyed by the awful Senator Harry Reid, critical mass was reached. All that law would have done was require a mandatory federal prison sentence for a violent, illegal alien felon who defied deportation, who came back after being kicked out. Reid and other Democrats in the Senate killed it. The new mandatory ban sentences bill would create would have a crippling financial effect. And that's an understatement. But no evidence that they would actually deter future violations of the law. This legislation would require about 20,000 new prison beds, 20,000. 12 new prisons cost over $3 billion. This is yet another attack on the American community. So let me get this straight, Reed. To punish violent, illegal alien felons who cross back into this country after being deported is an attack on the immigrant community? And the prison stuff is just false. The numbers of criminal aliens would fall drastically once they knew they'd be harshly punished just for standing on American soil. They wouldn't have to commit another crime. Just for standing here, they get 10 years under case law. Now, the kind of insanity that Reed puts forth is why so many Americans, including this one, are angry. How about crime in the poor neighborhoods? Last night in Chicago, 12 people shot, including a 13-year-old boy. 12. That begins, that brings the total number of Americans shot in the Windy City this year alone to 3,476. Chicago is more dangerous than Kabul, Afghanistan. And it's clear that Democratic Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Republican Governor Bruce Runner will not stop the violence in poor black Chicago neighborhoods. Will not stop it. Now, that is true racism for you PC people out there. Let's go overseas. Major battle underway right now to remove ISIS from Iraq's second largest city, Mosul. The hard truth is ISIS should never have been allowed to take Mosul or any other Iraqi territory in the first place. The only reason that happened was a huge foreign policy blunder by President Obama. As you may know, he withdrew all American troops from Iraq in 2011. Without American forces there, ISIS grew in power. And who was the architect of that policy? Secretary of State Clinton. Finally, what about our national spirit? One word, terrible. With all the muck, WikiLeaks, media bias, and chaos surrounding the presidential campaign, Americans are disgusted. 
We're a divided nation. Most folks are voting against a candidate rather than for one. And the politically correct culture that is being imposed on us by the media, imposed, is rapidly destroying traditional values. All religious Americans know that. So it seems to me that the challenger in the presidential race, Trump, should have an advantage because Secretary Clinton is embracing the policies of Mr. Obama. But it has not turned out that way. And Trump is down to his last chance tomorrow night. And that's enough. Now for the top story, brand new Fox News poll. Among likely voters, Hillary Clinton now leads Donald Trump 45% to 39%. Governor Gary Johnson clocks in with 5%. Jill Stein, the Green candidate, mm -hmm. 3%. Last week, the Fox <clears throat> poll had it this way, 45, 38, Clinton over Trump. So things remain stagnant, but Trump's hands on. Joining us now from Austin, Texas, Darren Shaw, the polls for Fox News. So, anything changed in the last week, Dr. Shaw? The numbers stayed pretty much the same, but anything behind the scenes change? Well, it's pretty much stasis, Bill. There's not a lot going on right now, and in some sense that's probably good news for Trump because um, the media's coverage has been continually negative. He's had more sort of you know difficult stories to deal with over the past week. But it seems to me that she's topped out at about you know the mid-40s. Her numbers have been fairly stagnant. His numbers have dropped. There's no evidence he's really recovering much of that ground he lost. In fact, if you look at the internals, one in five Republicans one in five Republicans say they will not vote for Trump in this election. 20% aren't going to vote for him. But you know what caught my eye, yeah. doctor? The independents. Among yeah. independents, in one month, Hillary Clinton's lost 4%, down 35 to 31. Trump has gained 3%, 35 to 38. That's a seven-point swing here. Um, if that trend continues for the next three weeks, that 6% gap, that they have now among likely voters, that'll go down to 2%, which is well in the margin of error, will it not? I think if you're, there are two dynamics going on, Bill, you're exactly right. One of the things also in the internals of the poll shows that he has recovered some of his footing on economic handling. In fact, it's the one issue, but it's the most important issue, it's the one issue where he leads her in terms of handling assessments. And my sense is, is that if he keeps focusing on the economy, kind of apropos of your talking points, you know, he has a chance not only to carve in uh, a greater share of the vote with independents, but to recover some of those Republicans that he's been hemorrhaging since early October. Okay, so tomorrow, the reason I say it's his last chance is because this is the final time he will command, and so will Secretary Clinton, millions of eyeballs. I, I estimate maybe 50, 60 million people will watch it live, but everybody else sees it on the Internet, on the news, the clips, and things like that. You know, retail uh, politics, you know, going from state to state, rally to rally, that's not going to do it at this point. Three weeks left, three weeks from today we vote. So Trump has really got to do something tomorrow night fairly dramatic, correct? I think that's right. I mean, if the election is held, uh, you know, tomorrow, Hillary Clinton wins this race. He needs to change the dynamic. I think, you know, mm -hmm. your sort of points earlier are exactly right. If this is just sort of a traditional left-right fight, you know, it's, it's close, but he probably loses by a point or two. If it's an argument about change or a referendum on the state of the country, sure, he's much more competitive. Because they're very angry. They're very, very angry. They're very, right. very angry. All yeah. right, Doctor, we yeah. appreciate it. Now let's go to the Fox Newsroom where Arnon Mishkin, director of the Decision Desk, I love that, the Decision Desk. All right, it's a desk that's going to make the decision, is standing by. Let's talk electoral votes, Arnon. What's the headline here? Okay, right now, according to our Fox News assessment, Hillary Clinton is leading, or solidly ahead, or slightly ahead, in states that comprise about 307 electoral votes. Um, Donald Trump is ahead in states which uh, are, are comprise about 181 electoral votes, and there are 50 electoral votes in states that we would consider undecided at this stage. Um, All right, so if that's the math, then, um, Trump can't win even if he wins all of those uh, undecideds. That, that's correct. What he needs to do is steal some states that are lean, uh, leaning to Hillary Clinton. The interesting thing is that what we're seeing in each of the states is an echo of what Darren or Professor Shaw was talking about about the Fox News poll. Hillary Clinton has been, has been steady at 45, um, roughly 45 percent, mid, the mid-40s. That's what she is across all these states, both the lean Hillary Clinton states as well as the toss-up states. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump has been losing ground. All right. In the, to in the states where he's competitive, he's in the mid-40s. In the states where he's losing, he's in the low 40s or the, uh, the high 30s. The opportunity there for Donald Trump is to make some of the points you were making in the Talking Points memo 
and to sort of win back these vote voters who have clearly left him in the past. Yeah, years. the independents, he, and he's got a little momentum there, um, but he's got to win Nevada, where the debate is tomorrow night. Colorado, he thinks he's going to win. If Trump wins Colorado, that would be a real, real big victory. And then he's got to pick off, you know, Florida's in play, Ohio's in play, North Carolina's in play. I, I, don't think I think that play. the states, I, I agree with you that Virginia's not in play. No. The states he needs to focus on and must win are number one, Florida, which represents about 29 electoral votes, yep. and Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. If he can pick two out of three of those, Florida and either Wisconsin or Pennsylvania, off of Hillary Clinton and in Ohio, uh, which is a toss-up state, then he has a clear opportunity to get 270 electoral votes. Uh, it's getting to be very dramatic, and we appreciate it, Arnon. Thank you very much. Say hello to the decision desk for me. I, <laughs> I, miss, it. It. I miss it very much. <laughs> Next on the rundown, Yale professor says he's voting for Trump. Is that even possible? The later stunning undercover videotape showing far-left zealots may have created violence at Trump rallies. Dr.